Today, I got seven more awesome PVC hacks, and I'm pretty sure you're gonna like them. So stick around, cause here we go. PVC hack number one. So on my very first PVC video that I made like three years ago, I made what they call a noodle, and you use it for catfishing. On the one I made from the first video, I put a weight inside of it, so when the fish hit, the noodle stood up. On today's video, I'm gonna make another one, but it's a little bit different. On this catfish noodle, I'm using half inch PVC, two half inch PVC caps, and we'll need a small pool noodle. This is the little pool noodle, and it has a half inch hole in it. You'll need some fishing line, of course. This ain't fishing line, but this is what I'm gonna use on this project. We're also gonna need some eye bolts. These are not regular eye bolts, but I've got them left over from another project that I did, so I'm using these. The last thing we're gonna need are these plastic spools. These spools come 12 to a pack and I got them off of Amazon. They look a lot like a spool that solder or something would come on but you order them and they're empty and according to what size PVC you want to use. When you look on Amazon it usually shows you the inside diameter of this hole. So order some that's going to fit over your PVC. The first thing we're going to do is drill a hole and put our eye bolt in the end of it. Then put our nut on it. It doesn't have to be watertight, but I usually put some silicone or something inside of mine around the nut to keep it from leaking. Then we'll put that cap on, and I'm using like an 18-inch piece of PVC. Next, slide your little spool down it. Then measure your pool noodle to the right length. Once you get it cut, slide it on. Put your top cap on. Well, when you're finished, you got a line holder made right onto your pool noodle. And that right there is pretty dang cool. I really think it's cool because I've used these a lot. Wrapping your line around your noodle just, it kind of turns your noodle up. You know what I'm saying? What kind of dreams do plumbers have? Pipe dreams. PVC hack number two. On last week's video, I made a marker buoy by taking a piece of PVC, cutting it, putting pool noodles on each end, wrapping string around it, of course, and putting a weight on the end of it. And some of my subscribers pointed out that it won't stop turning. Initially, I thought about cutting the sides flat, but they had better ideas. What you could do is take a flat piece of lead or take a sinker and flatten it out yourself. When you get the shape of the PVC, take you some super glue and glue it to your PVC. Once you get it glued on there, put your pool noodle back on, and now you got a little weight in there that'll make this thing stop turning. Once the weight goes to the bottom, it's gonna wanna stay there. That was a pretty good idea. This is PVC, I figured I'd add it. While I was out shopping for this video, I ran into a couple of my subscribers. And of course, I put them to work. PVC at number three. What's your name? Hunter. I got a stock of one and a half inch PVC. And we're gonna cut four pieces 18 inches long. Now I take my one and a half inch PVC and I put it in between two three quarter inch boards. These are just some old fence pickets I had. I marked the end at two inches right there and right there. I also did that on both sides. I'm gonna use these boards to draw me a straight line three quarters of an inch up. So basically this makes it straight and space right. but I'm gonna draw my lines and the two inch marks is where I stop at. So I got all my lines drawn off on all my pieces of PVC. Next, we're gonna cut this line right here. We're not gonna be fooling with the lines going this way, just this line going down to PVC. And remember, there's one on both sides. You can use an air grinder like this, not very expensive. Dremel makes cut off tools too. Or you could use an angle grinder. Okay, so I got my grooves cut all the way through on all of my pieces of PVC. I'm gonna use a piece of masking tape and I'm gonna run it from this cut to this cut. And we'll use that as our cut line to get our last cuts. I'm going to take my hacksaw and cut this part out. You could also use that grinder again. That was pretty messy. After you get your ends cut out, this is what it's going to look like. 
The animal was sand all this down good. Wiped all the marks off of it with acetone. And next, we're gonna cut a notch in this side on two of them. And on the other two, we're gonna cut it on the other side. I got a little sawzall here with a tiny little blade. That little air grinder would probably be easier. After we get our slots cut in these, take a three quarter inch piece of PVC, cut two 12 inch pieces and one seven inch piece. Then we're gonna take two 90s and put that together. Now we're going to lay out our pieces. We're going to drill a hole everywhere they meet. Here, 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 and here. When we bolt this together, we're going to bolt it through this piece. And we're going to bolt it through the piece on the other side. When you're done and you get all this stuff bolted together, you've got a way you can carry multiple rods fishing with one hand i got this pvc hack right here from one of my subscribers and he posted it on the facebook page well i thought it was pretty dang awesome so i decided to try it and you know what it is pretty dang awesome somebody stole all the toilets at the police station really yeah but they don't have nothing to go on pvc hack number four What's your name? Scott Up Church, Blacksburg, South Carolina. About five months ago, I made an all new PVC rod holder storage rack. And it really turned out awesome. If you hadn't seen that video, go over and check it out. But I used wood and PVC on it because PVC joints have got really expensive. And when you make a rod holder rack that'll hold 24 rods, then that's a lot of joints and it adds up really fast. But this rod holder rack really did turn out awesome. Go over and check it out. If you need yourself a new rod holder rack. Hack number five. So for this next idea, you'll have to make two of them. I'm starting with some one inch PVC. I've got three 90s, one T, and three end caps. I'm also going to need two of these magnets that you can get at Harbor Freight. They're not that expensive and each one of them is 95 pounds. You're also going to need two bolts and two nuts for your magnets. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut me a piece of this PVC 55 inches long. After you get your PVC cut, you put a cap on one end and a 90 on the other one. And yes, you're going to want to glue this together. Now, after you get your 90 glued on one side and your end cap glued on the other side, we're going to take our T and we're going to connect the 90 on each end of it, just like that. And to do that, we're going to have to cut a little bitty tiny piece of PVC to fit in here so we can glue it. I got my T glued to my 90s, 190 on each side. I went ahead and cut me another piece of PVC to fit in the top part because it's going to be the same way. Next, I'm going to take my caps and I got to drill some holes in them. And I need my holes the same size as my bolts. And then we're going to use those bolts to bolt our magnets to our end caps. And then finally, after you get all of this put together. You want to take your original piece and glue it onto this and make sure it's coming straight up off of it and it ain't all crooked. Now the next thing we're going to do, we need to cover this magnet because this will scratch paint. I have used felt on these before on several different projects, but the felt kind of kills a lot of the magnet strength. So I'm going to try something different. I'm going to use some flex seal and hopefully it'll seal everything up. And I got some white flex seal so it all matches. I'm not sure if you know what a boat trailer guide is, but a boat trailer guide bolts onto the back of your trailer. That way when the trailer's backed into the water at the boat ramp, you can see where the back of the trailer's at. It just makes loading your boat a little bit easier. And a lot of people buy them and bolt them onto the back of their boats. But my little experiment today is to see if I can make one that you can put on and take back off easily. So now that our rubber's dried, shouldn't scratch our trailer. We're gonna try this thing out, see if it works. Remember, put a thin coat of rubber on this or you're gonna kill the magneticness. You know what I'm saying? What'd you say? 
Is that even a word? I think that this could actually work. It looks like it's kind of tall now, but when you back it in the water, it's actually going to set lower than this. And like how close it is to the actual boat, you could adjust that by making this pipe just a little bit longer. And I didn't make this with intentions of it being a ram bar where you can run your boat into it and line yourself up. This is just to see if you are lined up. It actually gives a little bit and the magnets don't let go. But if you hit it hard enough, they are gonna let go. But the cool thing is, if you seal it all up, it should float if it falls off. PVC hack number six. On one of my hack videos from last year, you can go over and check it out for a more detailed description. But I took PVC and I measured it out the height I needed it. Then I took a rubber cap and put it into the bottom of it. I made it to where it would clip onto my trolling motor shaft. And basically what it's for is to keep your trolling motor shaft from bouncing when you go down the road because you don't want to tear stuff up. And they actually make these trolling motor holders. Some people use round balls, but all that stuff's expensive. And the PVC when I made was pretty inexpensive. I'm just saying. PVC hack number seven. This is a four inch coupling for black PVC. And this is very hard. Black PVC couplings are also thicker than the white ones, as you can see in this photograph. I think I paid five or maybe six dollars for this at Lowe's. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut it down because this one's a little bit too thick. The next thing we're gonna need is a hole saw. This is a two inch hole saw and I'm gonna drill two holes in it, strategically. We're gonna cut through one of the holes and I'm gonna cut above the other one. And next, we're gonna drill a hole in it. When you're finished, you got yourself a rod holder. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. You know. I know you know. If you like this video, then you should go check out this video. Or this one, or this one, or that one, cause this one's over.